Hello everyone, welcome to another Gasp ALS project update. So as you guys know, Unreal Engine has been updated to the 5.6 a couple of weeks ago, and when Unreal Engine gets updated, uh, the Gasp ALS project is due for an update as well. Um, so I want to start this video by saying that there is a Discord channel, Discord server now for the Polygon Hive uh, community. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking for this, and I think it will be very, very useful to discuss issues and to collaborate on the development of the Gasp ALS project. So uh, it is uh, in the description if you want to join. Uh, hopefully when someone f finds an issue or encounters an issue, we'll fix it together and then the others will have the, the solution searchable in the Discord server. Um, all right, so aside from this, we can start the update. So in 5.6, there were no major updates to the uh, game animation sample project. The main uh, update was the camera system. Uh, now the gameplay camera system if you go into uh, blueprints and cameras, you will see that there's a lot of files here. Before, these were just entries in the camera asset. So if you update your 5.5 um, uh, project that was using gameplay cameras to 5.6 and you open the camera asset, it will generate these automatically. I've done this for the guest PLS. And I've also um, updated the, the camera systems that I had, like the shoulder switching um, to use the new uh, system from 5.6. Um, the other major update uh, to the project and a highly requested one is the inclusion of a first-person camera now. So there is a first-person camera. It's not perfect by all means, but it is uh, a pretty good start for anyone who wants to do uh, first-person uh, starting from GASP. So it also works with, uh, with the layers. All the different layers are properly working and it is uh, done with the new uh, gameplay camera system. So the way the system works is um, it will always uh, put your character in strafe mode. So even if you're standing still, like the character will turn uh, as if you are like aiming. Uh, because in the game animation sample, even if you have your character in strafe mode and you stop, like when you turn the camera, the character doesn't turn. So the moment you go into first person, the character is strafing. Um, and it will remember if you were strafing or not before. So if I'm in free camera mode and I enter a first person and then I go out, I'm, I'm back to free camera mode and it will remember how balanced your camera is. So if I'm in far away camera plus um, free camera mode, I can go to first person when I come out, it's gonna come back to how the camera was set up before. Um, it also works with the ragdoll. So if I am here, I enter ragdoll, it's gonna go out of first person, and then the moment I get out of the ragdoll, it's gonna come back to first person. So this is just some polish um, if you to have the project like function properly. Uh, but if you guys want to do first person, this is just here to serve as a start. This is not a like fully featured first person system. Um, having a uh, a project that is both first person and third person is something that is quite tricky to manage and there's a lot of animation work to be done there so most projects are going to be either first person or third person if you want to have both then you probably will have some, some additional stuff to do as always there's the control widget you can walk on, on it uh, here once you walk on it it will open up and you can see the um, buttons here so the new things from gas pls are in purple and you can see the first person is using the, the, the button one, the ragdoll X, and the two, three are, is the way to uh, switch between the camera styles. Uh, I put them on two, three instead of the, um, the mouse wheel because the mouse wheel is used to switch the overlays when you're holding Q. So these are the biggest updates uh, in terms of features. Um, there's another quick update that I want to talk about. Um, if you're following the tutorial and you create uh, the overlay poses and you create the ABP and then you want to plug it into the uh, the sandbox character, you won't find the difference in this function. So update overlay state. Before there was a giant switch case that was going through all the overlays and now you will find this. I saw many questions on YouTube that like say that they are lost past this, this place. So I will basically explain to you uh, what is happening here. So there was a contribution to the GitHub repository and um, a guy by the name of Nick proposed to use uh, choosers uh, instead of uh, that giant switch case, which was very ugly. So I accepted that and it's actually nice. So basically right now, when you are in the overlay system and you are in the overlays and let's say you create uh, an overlay for the binoculars, for example, once you create the poses and you create the ABP, same as before, uh, what you do is you create a data asset or you can duplicate another one. 
and then you set those things here. You set the, your ABP here, you set the mesh, and you set uh, where the mesh, uh, is it left hand or right hand? And you set where the mesh to, uh, is supposed to be attached, the socket. And you will come to, um, in overlay systems here, you have this chooser. And this chooser table, you will add your overlay here with the corresponding enum. And the enum, of course, you have to add it yourself. If the enum is in blueprints, you, so you come here. Let's say you want to add another one, which is for a Gatling gun. So you will come here, you will add an enumerator, name it Gatling gun, create the poses and the ABP uh, in the overlays uh, in here, uh, in your folder, and then create a data asset for it, set everything. And then you come to the chooser and you select that new data asset that you created and you give it that enum that you just created. Once you do this, the, the, the overlay will automatically appear uh, in here and it will select all the correct things. So it's actually easier than going into the, um, the character blueprint and adding that code every time. Now you can add overlays without even touching the character blueprint. The other big and even bigger uh, thing on the project is that if you go into the content folder, well, it's completely empty now. There's nothing in the content folder. And that is because I moved the project into a plugin format. So if you go into plugins, you will find gas PLS and then you will find all the files here. Um, I've done this so that we can port the, the project uh, fairly easily to another um, Unreal project. So you will find on the main page of the GitHub a, a process to port gas PLS to another project. It's fairly easy. You will just copy the plugin. And then once the plugin is uh, is copied, you will have some configuration files to merge. You can do it in like literally two minutes and then you will have gas PLS running into your own project rather than having to open gas PLS and migrate all the files and then maybe have some reference issues and all of that. So this should help uh, a lot of you guys that already have a project running uh, to integrate gas PLS as a plugin and then like take your time to plug it properly with your uh, previous systems. So um, now that the 5.6 is out, uh, we will have quite some time, at least six, seven months between uh, 5.6 and 5.7. So there will be uh, multiple updates coming to the project. Uh, as, as always, keep in mind, guys, that I'm doing this only on my free time. So I don't have time to create like really advanced stuff like inventory or like gun mechanics or anything. And this project is not supposed to be that. It's supposed to be a fully featured locomotion system. But I will be doing some cool stuff. Uh, one of the main ones is actually separating the overlays, the pose overlays, like the injured, the hands tied, uh, the feminine pose, uh, and the item overlays. So the idea is to be able to have a injured character that is also holding a gun in his right hand, or a character that is holding a gun in his right hand, but also holding a torch in the left hand. So I think that this will add a lot of uh, potential and possibilities to the project and that is that is the next thing that I will be working on. Um, I fixed the uh, the IK uh, when turning left and right there was like some weird elbow stretching issue now the IK is like working properly and it's uh, following the character properly but there are still some issues in the poses especially if you go into first person you will see that the hands are not lining perfectly and that is because the poses that were retargeted from um, ALS are not made for the UEFN mannequin and uh, there are some, some little issues with that. So I will be spending a little bit more time to have a better um, IK system. For those who are interested, I've already um, added a system here under the hand IK. You will find hand IK setup with item sockets. This is basically a system where uh, if you plug these, um, it's basically going to look for uh, sockets on the items themselves and it will like stick uh, the hand to those items so this is an experimental system if you want to have IK set up manually uh, I left it uh, disconnected by default because it's still an experimental thing and in order to use it you will have to add sockets to your items so for example the M4 here you will see there is a hand left socket and you place the socket here and then you position it correctly based on your poses so I will be working on something similar to really have a very, very strong uh, IK system. Uh, I will work on the multi-layering system to be able to layer multiple poses and items on top of each other. And then we'll see where we go from there, probably some more movement stuff uh, in the future. But most importantly, as I said in the beginning of the video, there's now a Discord channel. I will uh, work on a roadmap for the project, which lists the most wanted features. 
Um, I have the Discord server, the Discord community vote on that. And then if any of you guys want to participate to the project, like it will be much easier uh, in the Discord. So you can pick items from the roadmap, implement them, and then we can review them together and we can integrate them into the project. Um, so uh, yeah, um, as always, if you want to support my work, there's a buy me a coffee link uh, in the description. You don't have to do it. The project has always been meant to be free. Uh, but uh, if you want to support, that's greatly appreciated. If you want to support me even more, there is uh, our game, Warden's Will, that was released a couple months ago. It's also in the description, the Steam link is there. If you will, if you like that kind of game, it's a third-person multiplayer action roguelike, um, kind of like Risk of Rain. If you like those kind of games, it would mean the world to me if you could purchase the game and if you like it, um, put a uh, nice review on Steam. That would be a uh, really appreciate it as well. Um, other than this, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, as always, drop your thoughts and uh, questions in the comments. I will try to answer them to the best of my capacity. Uh, I'm sorry I've been away for two, three months. As I just said, we were releasing our game and it was uh, some really hectic time, so I didn't have time to answer the last questions on the channel. I will go over them and I will try to, to uh, answer as much as I can. Uh, if you have any, any things uh, you would like to discuss about the project, uh, join the Discord community and let's discuss together. Um, one last thing, one last disclaimer is the Discord channel is not really a support channel. As I said, this is a free project. I can't answer all the questions, so I'm really counting on the community to answer each other and to collaborate uh, with each other. But don't expect me to be answering messages uh, all day because I have a job on the side and I'm just doing this on the weekends mostly and sometimes at night. So, as always, this has been Anis. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and expect more from now until 5.7. See you guys.